When Americans think of motorsport, the first thing to come to mind is usually NASCAR and the Daytona 500. For some, the first thing to come to mind is their county dirt track, where the area's garage owners, family business members, and mechanics face off against one another. For others, their first thought is the nearby country club circuit, where the state's entrepreneurs casually speed around corners in their race cars. Chances are, a street circuit isn't what comes to mind. Once a popular way of bringing in tourism, street circuits are set up out of closed-off city streets, and even more rarely, closed airports. They're often tight, technical, and unforgiving. While they require heavy noise measures and traffic detours, in some areas, the profits the race brings in outweigh the downsides. In the early 2010s, Formula One, the world's top racing series, was attempting to break back into the American market after being out of it for a few years. They would successfully do so at a brand new permanent circuit in Austin, Texas in 2012, but Formula One was looking for more. They thought they found a spot, and it was in New Jersey. And it looked perfect. Ever since Formula One's formation in 1950, street circuits have been a vital part of the series, the famous Monaco Grand Prix being on one. However, the top racing series has had a hard time in the United States. It attempted a variety of circuits in the early 60s before settling on Watkins Glen in 1961, a road course in the Finger Lakes area of New York, which it stayed at for 20 years. After a few mediocre street circuits through the 80s and early 90s, one of which was such a failure that reportedly a local ostrich festival guarded more spectators, Formula One took a break from the American market for a decade. It returned in 2000 at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, where it stayed until 2007, and during a massive tire crisis in 2005, where six cars started the race when everyone else boycotted. In 2010, the United States Grand Prix's new home, Circuit of the Americas, in Austin, Texas, was announced, but Formula One had always been eyeing New York. The center of American trade had been subject to a few proposals throughout the years, one at Flushing Meadows in 1985, and another in the late 2000s in Central Park, but New York City hadn't seen a true race since the 1930s. In the early 2010s, Organizers realized they shouldn't be looking at the Big Apple, and that there was a much better spot, New Jersey. Announced in October 2011, the Port Imperial Street Circuit was to be a 3.2 mile street circuit, which would host the inaugural Grand Prix of America in 2013. The track looped through the back roads and downtown roads of Weehawken in West New York, just over the bridge. The circuit, designed by Herman Tilke, began at the New York Waterway Ferry Terminal before looping through a tight set of corners along the waterfront walkway, then turned right onto Pershing and crossed over a small bridge past several apartments. After winding past the cliff face, the track made a right onto JFK Boulevard East, which provided a fantastic view of the city's skyline and would weave through the rather wide main road of the two harborside towns. After that, they'd begin the run to the hairpin, making a right onto Anthony Dafina Way before doing a 180 near the sewage plant, and beginning a long dash down Port Imperial Boulevard before chicaning back onto the waterfront. Traffic was a large concern from the get-go. In 2002, a sports car race in Washington, D.C. was held for the first time, and despite being very popular and successful, was never held again due to demolition delays, traffic, and noise. New Jersey revolves around automobile use, but shuttered streets didn't concern race promoter Leo Hendry Jr., himself a racer, who insisted public transport would suffice to bring a planned 100,000 fans to the area. In 2012, Hendry hosted Formula One team Red Bull Racing and its drivers, David Coulthard and Sebastian Vettel. The two were given tours around the layout, praising the beautiful view of Manhattan. According to Hendry, the idea for the track came when he overheard that H.A. Wheeler, a former Charlotte Motor Speedway executive, was attempting to find an area for Formula One to race at in or near New York. Wheeler had already provided Hendry 
a philanthropist who once headed the Yes Network, the few valuable things, such as a Buick which Hindry ran in the long-defunct NASCAR sportsman division, and, most importantly, Wheeler's daughter's hand in marriage. Now it was time for Hendry to pay his father-in-law back. New York City and motor racing had had a checkered past, so to speak, as while it was once very popular in the early days of motorsport, with the city even holding the prestigious Vanderbilt Cup in the 1930s, since then there hadn't been anything. In 1984, the Championship Auto Racing Teams, or CART, the premier open wheel series in the United States at the time, started running a street circuit which looped through the parking lots and byways surrounding the Meadowlands in East Rutherford. This race went on until 1991. By then, its popularity had waned, and organizers wanted to move to New York City for a race on a short street course near the World Trade Center. The proposed World Trade Center Grand Prix was scheduled for 1993, but logistics, required road work, and the loss of the race's sponsor called this the race to be called off. It was then finished off by the bomb attack in the tower's basement that February. Several more attempts were made, such as the previously mentioned Flushing Meadows in Central Park. There was even a NASCAR-style local proposed in 2003, a Liberty Speedway, to be funded by none other than Donald Trump. NASCAR even purchased land on Staten Island for this track, but heavy opposition forced its cancellation. Finally, it looked like a race was going to happen. A gift from God, said West New York's mayor. A reason to love Hoboken at night, said a county spokesman. The race even made it aboard the 2013 calendar released in June 2012, and several exhibition runs were conducted by F1 driver David Coulthard. So, what happened to this race? The race fell apart almost as quickly as it had been announced. Locals had always been indifferent over it, the construction had started regardless. Construction on a previously planned parking garage and retail area at the New York Ferry Terminal along the waterway began in July 2012, with the intention of using it as Race HQ and the paddock for the cars and teams. It was to be converted every time the Grand Prix stopped by. However, work on the road, which was dotted with several turn lanes, potholes, and artificial speed bumps, had yet to even begin by the time the Grand Prix had its first setback. In August 2012, not even two months after the preliminary calendar had been released, Tom Cotter, president of Formula One Grand Prix of America at Port Imperial, the group responsible for bringing the race to New Jersey, resigned. The loss of Cotter, functionally race director Hendry's right-hand man, exposed that the Grand Prix was actually behind on sanctioning and licensing payments. While construction was continuing on the garage, it was apparent that the race would simply not be happening in 2013. Several more uh, critical workers left the project in August and September, including Trip Wheeler, Humpy Wheeler's son, and the project's chief marketing officer. Slowly but surely, the public became aware of why this project was failing, and by June 2013, they knew everything. Formula One Grands Prix are rarely profitable, and this is perhaps seen best with the street circuits. Usually they only break even. However, the problem with the Grand Prix of America is that it was flaunted to not require any public money. This is a very, very bad thing. The Singaporean Grand Prix, which joined the calendar in 2008, is partially funded by Singaporean billionaire Ong Bang Sang. Part of the appeal in street circuits is that they show local landmarks, Sang, already a racing fan and not the only major backer of the race, considered the Grand Prix a fantastic way to show off some of his hotels along the track's route. The United States Grand Prix and Circuit of the Americas have a plethora of major backers, including leading contractor Scott Collar, real estate mogul Irv Kessler, hedge fund manager Bobby Epstein, billionaire automotive entrepreneur Red Combs. Beverages tycoon John Paul de Joria. Exactly all of who these people were is mostly private record. There were at least 24 in all. Setting up the United States Grand Prix and building the circuit from blueprint to tape cutting cost almost $400 million, plus an extra $20 million or so to hold the race annually, which is paid by the state. And even today, Epstein, now the track chairman, isn't so sure that Formula One will stay at the circuit much longer. 
it's safe to say, Port Imperial Street Circuit didn't have a chance. Rosalind Partners owns most of the land the track was on, and never gave any hint that they were interested. This became a project that had little potential capital at the ready, and only Hendry and a small group of remaining businessmen trying to save it. And the thought of a multi-million dollar sanctioning fee was terrifying, especially considering A. The Grand Prix of America deal was to last a decade, and B. That t annual $20 million sanctioning fee that Texas pays is very cheap. Usually it's double that. It's unknown what tickets would have cost. However, a three-day ticket to the Canadian Grand Prix in Montreal, itself on a street circuit and mostly profitable due to the high tourist influx of the island it takes place on, its long time on the calendar, and the fact that the Canadian Grand Prix is one of the more exciting races on what can be a rather boring calendar, costs at the very least 159 US dollars. Those who want the luxury option at the track will be shelling out over $600, 621 to be exact. This is for all three days. Remember that the Grand Prix was not to cost any public money. Its profits from investors, ticket sales, tourism bonuses, and sponsorship placements would pay for everything. Taking the median of 390 and assuming that all tickets would cost this, and assuming 100,000 spectators, Grand Prix of America, on ticket prices, would make 39 million a year. That doesn't even cover the sanctioning fee! Let alone transportation of drivers, fuel support, security, which would no doubt be heightened due to being near New York, track construction, track demolition, repaving, annual inspections, maintaining the permanent facilities and components such as curbing, rerouting, lost potential profits from local businesses and tourist attractions, payouts for lost wages, and no doubt much more. It was just a terrible idea, and it failed spectacularly. Greece was briefly on the 2014 calendar, but was dropped in August 2013. In late 2013, Formula One boss Bernie Ecclestone revealed that the organizers of the Grand Prix of America had not paid him since the race agreement was signed in late 2011. Ecclestone had long torn up the contract by this point, and pointed out that the only reason he wasn't suing Hendry, who reportedly was offered state government help at one point in fall 2012 and rejected it, was the possibility that a major backer would sign on. This never happened, and the Grand Prix of America was left scratching up scraps. While some of the facility updates required for the Grand Prix were carried out, such as the aforementioned parking deck, no trace of the proposal remains. And perhaps that's a good thing. Northern New Jersey simply isn't huge on racing, and New Jersey's changing year by year. As of 2020, these are the racetracks in New Jersey, from the south end up. New Jersey Motorsports Park, a road course in Millville. Bridgeport Speedway, a dirt track in Bridgeport. Atco Dragway, a drag strip in Atco. The Gambler's Classic, a temporary oval set up for an annual indoor race at Atlantic City's Boardwalk Hall. New Egypt Speedway, a dirt track in New Egypt. Wall Stadium, a paved oval in Wall Township. The East Coast Dirt Track Nationals, a temporary oval set up for an annual indoor race at Cure Arena in Trenton. English Town Raceway Park, a karting and dirt bike facility in English Town. Island Dragway, drag strip in Great Meadows. The only facilities north of Trenton, not counting the Nationals, of course, are English Town and Great Meadows. Why is this? Well, New Jersey, northern New Jersey especially, has incredibly high property values. Racetracks lower property values due to noise control and pollutants such as dust and exhaust. A big problem in an area as densely populated as northern New Jersey. Ever since East Windsor and Flemington closed in 2002, northern New Jerseyans who aren't interested in drag racing, which only lives on at Island Dragway due to the surrounding farmland, will likely have to head out to Pocono in Pennsylvania or Orange County in New York. And perhaps we'd like to keep it that way. Though the Grand Prix of America is dead, this among other things, revitalized interest 
and then Racing Start for New York City. Formula E, an electric racing series founded in 2014, proposed a race in the dockyards of Brooklyn, far from city center, and the high-tech racing vehicles, famous for their low pollution and comparative quietness, quickly became a hit. Brooklyn e Prix has been held since 2016, and it doesn't look like the race is going anywhere anytime soon. <laughs>